Well, Vince, it's obviously it's it's been about a year since you've competed. This is nothing new in your <laughs> life. Uh, you're used to this, but I mean, I guess what is the feeling like every time you you come back from a year away or whatever? What's what's the feel like? Same shit, different day, man. Uh, just making my yearly appearance, uh, letting everyone know they need to be afraid of me when I come back out again. You know, showing my face. Um, this time, actually, I feel a lot better. I, I made some changes in my life in my camp and stuff, so uh, I'm excited. I'm excited this time for the for the fight. I'm really excited. Nice. When you talk about changes, you talking about like like physical changes, or you talking about like people around you, most? I mean, what what are we talking about? A little bit of all of it, actually. Uh, a little bit of all of it, actually. I uh, I moved. I moved out of California. I'm in Colorado now. I switched camps. I'm training at Factory X now. Um, I started lifting weights. <laughs> I've never lifted weights in my career, so I started lifting now, trying to strengthen up myself. Um, so just just a lot of little changes like that and little tweaks to uh, to you know go for a title run this time. Honestly. So how do you persevere through all this, right? I mean, you're a veteran of the game, but like you said, you're, you, as you joked, your yearly appearance, right? But I mean, yeah. how, how do you, I guess, first just mentally persevere through all this? There have to have been times where you're like, this just isn't worth it anymore. Honestly, uh, adversity really isn't anything new to me in my life. I've been dealing with my whole life. So to me, it's just normal. It's my life, right? It's kind of like, it's kind of like a firefighter who goes out and fights fires or a police officer who goes out and, and arrests criminals, right? Like this is, this is just my life. So I don't, I don't really see it as anything different than just a normal day for me, man. That's funny. What about, and not to pry too far, but like financially, man, is there a, is there a part where you go like, man, I gotta go get a real job at some point. <laughs> I mean, I try to think about that cause I am getting pretty old, but, uh, yeah, actually, uh, California got me one last time before I left. Um, it is expensive as hell to stay in that place. And it was even worse for me to leave. Like, I think it cost me $4,000 just to rent a, a truck to move out of California, which I used to work at U-Haul as a, I used to manage U-Haul when I was younger. So I remember it being like a few hundred bucks. And then when I moved, there were like 30, hundred bucks, something like that. And I'm like, are you, what the, did you bump your fucking head? Jesus. And they're like, Oh, that's the price. And they just kind of chuckle. Right. Cause they know. So I'm like, shit, but yeah, it definitely got drained a little bit financially. Um, I'm pretty good with money though, so I save my money pretty well. So that wasn't, you know, I'm a little worried. I was a little worried, but not too, too worried about it. Nice. Well, you're here, and uh, that, that's what counts. Uh, talk about the, the time at Factory X. I mean, is can, can we see a difference already, or is one camp a little, a little much to be like, yeah, it's a whole new guy this time? Uh, I mean, you'll see a little bit of a difference. You might see, uh, hmm, you might see a little bit of difference. I don't want to give away too much, but. Uh, I definitely have changed a little bit in my game. I'm still, I'm still going to be the same brute when I go out there, and, and I'm going to, you know, show that. But there, there's going to be some little differences in it. Um, my conditioning has is, is always been good. And since I've been at Elevation at Colorado, it's even like to me, it's just disgusting now how unstoppable I feel sometimes. Right. So just little changes like that. Um, my opponent's also from Colorado, which I thought was kind of funny, too. Like my first fight out there and they kind of throw me in the rivalry between these two gyms. So like no hard feelings, but it is what it is. I'm going to whoop this kid's ass. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What do you think about the matchup? Did you know? Do, did you know much about him? Do you scout much at this point in your career? Uh, no, I watched a couple of his fights, but not really. Um, man, I'm, I'm like a blank fighter fighter. So when I go out there and fight, I have a little bit of a game plan. But typically, I, I, I take the fight where it goes. So uh, he, he's a real tough kid. He's, he's actually got a really similar style to me. Um, people say he's got good wrestling. Um, I haven't really honestly seen anything that's too impressive for me. But um, yeah, I'm just I'm just expecting a good, nice fight, and and I did do a little research, but not too much, because like I said, I like to go out there and just let the fight happen. Yeah, I think of you. I think of kind of violent endings. Is that uh, is that kind of what you, you oh, plan yeah. on doing here? I'm feeling violent as fuck right now, man. I cannot wait to go out there and just scare people. That's awesome. And last thing for me, I guess, uh, you know, I'm sure you want to not have these layoffs moving forward, right? So, I guess, do do you have future plans? Like, I'd like to fight again here, or I'd like this opponent next, or because of the way your career is going, do you do you, do you try not to look too far in the future? Like, what what comes after this? <laughs> yeah, you know what? After I fought Miller, I was actually like wanting to fight within that year again because I fought him when exactly a year ago, almost honestly, because last August. So, I was trying to fight later that year, but in the November, I ended up getting sick, right? I, got, I ended up getting COVID. Me and a bunch of guys at the gym got COVID, right? So I was out for a month, and that kind of put a little damper on it. And then when I came back to the gym, a lot of people had kind of just stopped training. We're like, oh, we're just going to let this this thing pass, right? And then I'm like, hey, like I'm going to lay down and die type. So I was like, I had to make a move. So that was actually a big factor in why I moved to Colorado and started training with Factory X. I know we've seen some people when they had a, a, quick, a quick bout with the COVID, it affected different things, whether it be their lungs or other things. Sounds like to me like you're one of the, the lucky ones where you didn't have any sort of adverse lasting effects of it, cardio-wise, lung-wise, or anything, or or was there anything? No, not really. Honestly, I, man, I'm super lucky. I've been blessed really well with my parents with the good genes, right? 
Um, I'm, I'm, I've, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one in my family that got blessed as well as I did with the genes between my parents. Um, so when I got sick with COVID, I was, I was bad for like the first two days. I had a real bad headache. Um, the headache was real bad. I lost my sense of smell for a little bit, but by like the day four, I was, I was back smoking weed again, right? Smoking bong wood. So I was like, this is fucking nothing, right? To me, the flu was worse. So I was just one of those fortunate ones. Well, and I don't think people talk enough about what, how good uh, cannabis can help you with your health as well. So you just, yeah. that's just a, that, if there was ever a promo to say, smoke more weed because it helps <laughs> you fight COVID. That, Be like me, right smoke there. more weed. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. To, if, if I'm honest with myself, it probably wasn't the best idea to start smoking weed when I was still kind of sick from it. Right. Yeah. Cause it took me like a month to get a clear test, I think from COVID before I went back to training, but I don't know. I'm not the kind of guy who lives in fear at all, whether, whether, you know what I mean? I've had my life threatened before, so it was nothing new to me. And, and speaking of the good genes, you know, you're coming in here, uh, if this is correct, 38 years old, but you, you went to a new place, you're fighting that elevation. So your pro your body probably feels better than ever. Like you said, when you do the training, do you feel like by making this move and making these changes that you've just extended your career, possibly years and years by going, by going out there and making some of these changes? Um, at, at first, no, because when I went to, uh, when I actually first moved to Colorado and I was training with the guys at Factory X, I didn't know if I, I hadn't trained since, uh, like November. Right. And so I moved out there in March. Uh, I went out there for new year's. I checked it out. It was between there and Vegas. So I checked out both places. Um, I actually ended up moving out there in, in March when I first started training. It was kind of, it was kind of fucking me up a little bit. Right. Like I didn't like a lot of the guys, sorry. A lot of the guys on the team are all young. Like the team has an average age of, I think of like 23 or something like that. Right. So they're all young bucks and they're all just, they're all killers in there. And so at first I was kind of hurting a little bit. My body was sore all the time. I was, I was leaving training achy and kind of hurting a little bit. But then, uh, like I said, I, I made a couple changes. I started lifting. Um, I started seeing a therapist over at bar West, which is like right next door to the gym and to kind of correct my, uh, to correct my issues and in places where I was weak or, or lacking a little bit. Right. So, at first I was a little scared. I, I thought, I thought like, damn, am I too old for this now? Right? Like, like, is this, is this going to be it for me? But once I got in the swing of it and I think it only took me probably about a month, a month and a half to get used to the elevation, used to the training. And now I'm like, now you don't know if you don't know I'm 38 years old in the gym. You think I'm one of the, well, I'm one of the 23 year olds in there. Was that something when you, when you asked, when you were talking about, you know, how long am I going to do this? You know, was, were those thoughts in your head? over the past like years as especially with not getting on maybe as much activity as you would want did those did it make it easier for those thoughts to start creeping into your head a little bit but typically i don't really think about that stuff until like like you fuckers say something about yeah. that shit right like so i'm always like i don't know I, I don't i don't realize my age until someone says something to me i'm that kind of guy right like i don't really think about it and it's funny because all the guys in the gym, none of them know how old I am yeah. until I tell them either. So when I tell them I'm 38, they're all like, holy shit, are you really? I'm like, yeah, motherfucker. Like I've been around <laughs> shit. <laughs> was, uh, and, and then I guess one the last thing is when you were looking at the, whether you're going to go to, you know, Colorado or whether you're going to go to Vegas, you know, what was the final decision? I'm sure there was other elements that weighed into why you chose that one location, the other, but what were you looking for between the two locations that ultimately led you to where you went? I was looking for, uh, mainly I was looking for a comfortable home and, and not the kind of comfortable home where I was too comfortable, but one that I would, that I would be uncomfortably comfortable. You know what I mean? So the, the, these, these were my, this is my thought process. Um, Vegas, if I would have went to Vegas, it would have saved me a lot of money. Um, I'd have the PI to go to, right? We get fed for free over there. The therapists, like all the training, the, the strength and conditioning, right? So there's a lot of resources. Um, the cons of me coming to Vegas was, I'd be basically training myself, going from gym to gym like I was in California. That was something I was trying to get away from. Ever since uh, The Ultimate Fighter, I've been kind of training myself and just, just being a nomad, honestly, and just going from gym to gym. I trained at like six different gyms in California. And I was in my car for probably like an hour at a time driving to these gyms, right? So I was kind of trying to get away from that. Um, I, wanted to, I, wanted to have, uh, I wanted to have someone to basically be on my ass, right? And so Colorado was the other option because uh, actually because of Alex Hernandez, he's a, he's a good friend of mine now. And, and he moved out there and he was talking to me about it. I was telling him that I'm kind of like a little unhappy with it. And I want to make some changes right now. I was talking to my manager, Jason house as well. And he's like, man, you should try out this gym and talk to the coach, Mark Montoya and, you know, see how you feel with the guys and yada, yada. So I went out there for new years for a week and I tried it out. And instantly when I went there, it just felt like home to me. Like, the camaraderie that the guys have or the culture that, that uh, Mark Montonio likes to call it is just, it's unmatched to me. And I haven't really seen that in any gyms, right? Like I've seen that with Faber's guys back in the day, but you know, once the whole 
breakup happened with their guys and, and things started falling apart for them, like even they don't have that kind of camaraderie anymore. You know what I mean? So that thing is a real big, that's a real big thing for me. Like I'm a real big person on energy and, and energy is super, super uh, contagious. Right. So I was trying to find this energy that I wanted to, to kind of excel in and be a little better with my life and responsibility of my fighting. Right. Cause I kind of felt it slipping away from me a little bit. Um, Colorado was, a, was definitely more expensive than Nevada, but not as expensive as California. So I was still kind of like taking a little bit of a hit, but not too much, right? Money wise. And then, um, just like the comfort, like I said, and, and coach Mark is, is really big on self, uh, self, uh, how can I say this responsibility? So like, I'll, I'll give you an example. When I first started training there, uh, these guys train at 10 in the morning. When I train back at home, I'm training at 11 or noon, right? My time, California, or this time now, actually. So they're an hour ahead. So they train at 10, which is like nine o'clock for me, which I didn't even fucking wake up that early back home. Like I'm, I'm a sleeper, man. I need my beauty sleep. As you can see, like I'm trying to keep this face young, man. It's work. So, uh, yeah, right. So, uh, that's self responsibility. But I came to the gym one day and I was like, geez, I want to say I was like maybe three minutes late, like five minutes late tops. Right. And then, uh, I'm putting my stuff down. Everyone's warming up already. And, and coach Mark comes up to me and he's nice and calm, cool, collect, right? Like a real, just chill, just, bland face right and he's like hey what's up man i was like what's up he's like you know time of training i was like yeah 10 o'clock he's like yep he's like you know the vi most viable thing in life and then i kind of sat there and i was like fuck man he's giving me one of these speeches i'm like time he's like that's right he's like if you're not 10 minutes early you're late to me i was like fuck you're one of those guys i was like shit all right so like that that right there was kind of like kind of a kick in the pants for me right like and, and that kind of was like okay this is what i wanted i was like of course i was uncomfortable hearing that because i'm like you know, not to sound like a big show, but I'm like, I'm in the fucking UFC. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't need to be following what these what these lower guys do. But at the same time, I'm like, he's totally right. Like, stop being a fucking asshole. You need to be on time. You need to do this shit. This is the responsibility that you want to hold yourself accountable for. So that's what I did, right? And and that was like a huge thing for me. And just, I don't know. Ever since I've been there, I, I can't stop smiling, right? Like, I'm happy. I'm happy. Well, I guess last question and follow up a little bit of that. You went so much of your career, it sounds like, like you said, you went from place to place to place, but you, a lot of it were shaping it yourself. You were shaping your, your training. You were doing all that sort of stuff. It seemed to work for you, but you know, there's a lot of other fighters that are out there are doing the same sort of thing. But now it sounds like you found a place that you, you, you're, you're enjoying giving the reins over to somebody else that you trust to do the process. When you see other, or do you have advice for other fighters? Do you regret, I guess, maybe not doing that earlier in your career? And I mean, it doesn't look at record wise because you've, you've been getting the victories. But yeah. what would you say to other fighters that are maybe along that line that, that are either doing it on their own that maybe want to go or maybe you're on the fence? Do I need to go to a gym with have somebody shake it, you know, shape my training? Where do you stand on the whole, you know, is it is it should fighters be aiming for that or is there anything wrong with staying on your own for so long? Honestly, I think it kind of depends on the fighter. Like it worked for a long time for me, right? And I was doing okay. Like I'm still pretty successful as a fighter for that. Um, I had a couple of hiccups and a couple of things that, that maybe I could have done better. But I mean, in hindsight, if I, I wish I would have done it a lot sooner, right? I wish I would have done that. Um, but the only thing I could say to new, newer fighters, or people coming up is just like, when an old dog tells you something, just like try to take that as a, as a little, as a piece of advice, right? Like try not to take that too much as just a grain of sand and, and try to actually listen and think that thing through because I mean, had, had I known what I know now, I would have done it a long time ago, like I said. So, I mean, if it works for them, it works for them. But I don't know. It's, it's hard to compare, compare me to other guys because I'm a different kind of breed of fighter, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not an actual martial artist. I don't, do this, I don't do this for the notoriety. I don't do it for, you know, any kind of, any kind of status or, or anything like that, right? I, I, I fight because I'm an angry bastard, and, and this is my way of channeling that anger so I don't get arrested for it anymore, man. So, And it's kind of nice getting paid, too, right? So... Like that was, that was kind of my thing, but I would say just, just be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And, and when people tell you like, Hey, you're fucking up or you're doing this or do that, like actually listen to them and, and take advice from that because people who around you who actually care when they tell you things like that, they, they mean that kind of stuff. Right. And so that was something that I kind of, I kind of just took for granted a little bit. Awesome. Thank you so much. Best of luck. Thank you.